Marysville Joint Unified, and I am honored to present tonight's facilitator, speaker, all around. We're, we're very fortunate to have her here, Angela Webb, CEO of Arrive Alive, California. Thank you, thank you. And just to let you know, this is going to be recorded and posted on the district website so that your friends and your friends' friends can make sure they hear this information too. So good evening, my name is Angela Webb. I am the CEO and Executive Director of Arrive Alive California. And it's our privilege to go directly into middle schools and high schools throughout the state to talk about prevention and what's going on in impacting their age group. So let me start off with this. First and foremost, thank you for being here. We are gonna honor your time and definitely get you out maybe even a couple of minutes before seven o'clock. But most importantly, we are gonna save some time at the very end for you to ask us questions. Um, and we also have a special guest here to speak with you in addition to myself. So if you could, there is a pre-survey. You can just snap the QR code and that'll help us kind of gauge where you're at. It is 100% anonymous. We do this with all the kids too. And we're gonna be talking tonight basically why is there such an urgency with this fentanyl? Let you know that, that Yuba County is one of the leading counties that actually have a fentanyl task force for this area. We're gonna talk about the identification and the 2023 drug landscape. Completely different. The just say no facts, and then how, most importantly, how you can protect yourself and your family. This is something that is completely different version than what the students see. This is definitely more age appropriate for families. We have a lot more fun with middle schools, have it more age appropriate for them, and engaging back and forth, and same way with the high schools. So same type of material, completely different delivery. So that being said, let me ask you something. How many of you have heard of fentanyl? Okay, good. That means the awareness that we've started for the last year is starting to work. However, when you leave here tonight, our goal is for you not just to know of it, but you're gonna fully understand everything about it, and more importantly, what it looks like here in Yuba County. Now, before we begin, I think it's very important to address one thing. There is, the sound, a difference between, there's two sides to this coin, and that is overdose and poisonings. When I speak with the youth, I talk to them about the fact that they are being deceived to death. There is a fentanyl poisoning that's going on. Yes, there are those that have substance use disorders that are actually out there seeking fentanyl as their drug of choice. Fentanyl is 50 times more powerful than heroin and 100 times more powerful than morphine. It's extremely easy to make and it's very inexpensive. So we do have people that are seeking that. What my angle of this when I go and speak with middle school and high school is that there are, we have reports, we work with organizations that uh, drug dealers are targeting this age group ideally to get them hooked, they don't have a tolerance, but they're doing it in an indirect way, which we call fentanyl poisoning. And they are, they are hiding the fentanyl in other types of things like counterfeit prescription medication, which a youth would think is safe. And we'll talk about that a little bit more. So there are two sides of the coins. We're gonna focus on the fact of the youth being deceived. So the drug, and we're going to start at the nation side, nationwide level, and the Drug Enforcement Administration put out their first public safety alert in 2021, September 2021, the first one that they had put out in six years. And they had basically said, be on alert, we just want to let you know there is an influx of fentanyl coming into our country. Less than one year later, they put out another public safety alert. And this was December 2022, so not too long ago, they sent out and said uh, that they had already seized enough fentanyl to kill every American. And I think the scary, when you're hearing these numbers here tonight, understand this is not a scare tactic. These are factual, and this is to empower you with wisdom. 
so that you understand what we're looking at. But with all of these numbers, law enforcement, it doesn't matter if you've been on the job for 30 days or 30 years, they will all attest to the fact that they only seize about 8 to 10 percent of what's actually here in our backyard. So all those numbers seem very grave. We need to understand it takes a community of awareness and perfection to get out there. So the couple of different numbers here um, in 2021, the DEA and their lab put together and said, if you had 10 counterfeit pills in front of you, four would be lethal. And then they came out a year later and said, okay, the lethality has changed and now it's six out of 10 are lethal. And in October, I went back to, to Washington, D.C. I had the privilege of sitting in the briefing of the DEA headquarters and all of the numbers have changed again. And now it's 70% of all counterfeit prescription medication or any black market pill has a lethal potency of fentanyl in them. So where does that leave us? That is on nationwide scale, but not to, to get immune to the fact that it can't happen here. I did a quick research and added this to tonight's presentation. And there are so many different articles. And I think that because we have heard about fentanyl, whether it's in social media or news or radio, we're constantly hearing it. We're not realizing. We're almost becoming desensitized. So to the fact of it can't happen to us or it's not here, it's another county's problem, is to identify the fact that it is here. And we're going to have... Um, our chief investigator from the deputy district attorney's office here speak with us a little bit further. These were just some quick uh, run-of-the-mill articles I found today. So uh, before we do that, real quick little interview. Of course, their families, friends, and communities are shaken by this growing epidemic. Yeah, fentanyl is similar to morphine, but about 100 times more potent. We've seen it hidden in pills with people not knowing that they're taking the deadly opioid. Nearly every county in California saw at least one person die from fentanyl last year. There are four counties in the greater Sacramento region that have had some of the highest death rates. We're talking Butte, Nevada, Sutter, and Yuba County. I've lived here my entire life. I was born and raised here, so yeah, I've seen you know a lot of uh, a lot of families that have been impacted uh, by by drugs, specifically by opioids and fentanyl, and it's heartbreaking. It's scary. Each county, though, is taking a different approach to address the fentanyl crisis in their community. Yeah, today, KCR 3s Michelle Bandor went to Yuba County to see how they are tackling the epidemic. Emergency room nurses and doctors in the only hospital in Yuba County are watching people overdose and die from fentanyl in record numbers. Have I seen people with uh, the overdose in fentanyl? Yeah, well, that's, that's a given. Casey, in Sixing May, is the emergency department manager at Adventist Health Rideout Hospital. It's not a scary sight of you, you know, um, frantic or, or going psychotic, losing your mind. It's actually the opposite of where you're getting so sleepy. And it could be kids, it could be teenagers, it could be young adults, it could be old adults just sleeping and then not waking up and not breathing anymore. Fentanyl is meant for supervised patients with severe injuries like gunshot wounds or car accidents and very little is needed. That's why county leaders say the synthetic drug made on the streets is so deadly. They think that they're taking some hydrocodone and really they're taking a lethal amount of fentanyl. That's why it's so dangerous. The Yuba County District Attorney offers treatment and the direct phone number of a counselor to drug users who come into the judicial system. We're absolutely still using every tool that we have left uh, in, in our toolkit. It's just gotten a lot harder. Yuba County healthcare workers are going to events armed with Narcan, giving it away for free. In fact, this hospital has handed out 7,200 kits, making it the top two hospital in the state for giving away the life-saving measure. If we could get education and awareness out that Narcan could save someone's life, the next step is, okay, we gotta make Narcan accessible or readily available for everyone. One way Yuba County leaders say they can lower the number of deaths in their community. In Marysville, Michelle Bandour, KCRA 3 News. And as county leaders study the data, they believe that those who are dying are a mix of habitual drug users looking for that potent high, as well as young people who don't know that they're taking fentanyl. Of course, their, of course their families, friends.
Good evening. My name is Brant Lowe. I work for the Yuba County District Attorney's Office. I'm the Chief Investigator for the Bureau of Investigations. I've been there for the last year. Prior to working for the District Attorney's Office, I spent 22 years at the Yuba County Sheriff's Department. Um, when I started, it was a great culture shock to see the methamphetamine epidemic of the early 2000s that was there. Um, it was surprising because I grew up in a sheltered environment, I suppose, didn't see that kind of stuff, didn't think it was here, thought it was a big city pro problem. Today, a lot of people think that the fentanyl epidemic is a big city problem, that it's not gonna come here, that it's not gonna affect our kids, that it's not gonna affect our friends or our family, it's not gonna impact us. I'm here to tell you that it is. Yuba County uh, District Attorney's Office in 2000, or 2021 uh, started doing what's called a fentanyl advisement form in all of our drug courts. So the fentanyl drug advisement form essentially informs drug users that fentanyl, one pill of fentanyl can kill, it's called the one pill can kill form, where they sign that form acknowledging that they are aware of the dangers of use distribution or sales of fentanyl. And in doing so, by, in, when they're signing that form, they're acknowledging that should they provide, sell, or furnish uh, fentanyl to an individual who overdoses or poisons and gets poisoned and they die that they will be charged with murder. Um, in May of 2023, 23, um, Yuba County successfully prosecuted its first fentanyl murder case. Um, we sent a guy to prison for the murder. Uh, he sm smuggled some narcotics into the jail and another inmate got the hold of the narcotics and overdosed and died. The dose was enough that Narcan didn't even save him. Um, the potency levels that we're seeing lately, one dose of Narcan sometimes isn't even doing the trick, that they're having to use multiple doses to try and, and save somebody's life. Um, sorry, I brought notes so I don't try to forget anything. Um, I did a, a quick query today of our cases since we started doing the fentanyl advisement in 2021, and we have done over just over 2,300 advisements that have been given. Um, and the statistics that I pulled for 2021 and 2022, I do not have 2023 accurate yet, I'm sorry. But in 2021, we prosecuted 130 fentanyl cases. In 2022, it was 230 fentanyl cases prosecuted. Uh, those are all fentanyl advisement uh, enforced cases as well. Um, And everybody wants to know, and I'm, I'm sure she's going to cover it further in here. What is the best thing that we can do about this to protect our families? It's open, honest, heartfelt communications with your kids. I've had these, these, these talks with my own children who were both go to attend schools in Marysville Joint Unified School District. With some of my kids' friends, you've got to tell them that they have to be honest, they have to be safe, they have to communicate this kind of, about this kind of stuff. It's the one pill can kill, kind of like when you go back to the 90s, just say no to drugs, it sounds, might sound gimmicky, but it's the legitimate truth. Um, and people need to be made aware of, of that kind of stuff. It's not too late or too early to start. You don't wait for the right time. Talk to your kids when they're younger about you know, common sense. Don't take medications from your friend. It might just be an aspirin, because we're, we're seeing it in all kinds of different uh, Forms. It's not just drug users who are getting a hold of this and overdosing and having these problems. It's kids, it's loved ones, it's just people that are accidentally getting poisoned from the, the medications that they think they were just taking a Xanax to go to sleep after, you know, they studied and crashed, uh, crash studied for a exam or something and they didn't sleep so they want to sleep the next day before the exam and taking a Xanax and it's a street Xanax and not, you know, the common sense of not taking the drug in the first place, but that one pill can uh, child. Um, in the, the thing, uh, Mr. Attorney Clint Curry had mentioned that we're using the tools that we have currently available to try to prosecute these things as hard as we can. Um, some of you are probably aware that Prop 47 kind of took some of those tools away from us, so we're trying to find new ways to to deal with these uh, this epidemic currently. 
um, we're trying to revitalize drug court um, in a new new format with more terms and kind of a little more um, meat to the, to the discipline side of it because we're not seeing we're seeing repeat offenders so we're trying to combat some of those things um, I think that's kind of what I have to say about it but the, the talk to your kids I've talked to mine and uh, we got to fight this thing together Fentanyl is in everything out there now. These aren't the drugs of 10 years ago. Illicit fentanyl has 50 times the strength of heroin. As little as two milligrams can be fatal. Before Stephen and Andrew passed, I didn't really know anything about fentanyl. Many young adults have never heard of illicit fentanyl. This increases the risk of death through experimentation. They are putting it in everything to make all their drugs more potent and more addicting. Illicit fentanyl is being used to make counterfeit prescription pills, as well as lace drugs of all kinds. They were good kids that made an, an innocent mistake. Young people are supposed to learn from their mistakes, not die from them. He thought he was being safe. He took one Percocet, and now he's dead. This is a drug like we've never seen before. People are being poisoned through deception. They think they're buying one drug, but receive another that kills them. Fentanyl is the number one killer for people ages 18 to 45. Anyone, anywhere, anytime. Fentanyl kills. For more information, please visit matthewsvoice.org or facingfentanylnow.org. So, to go into now, let's talk about what is fentanyl. Let me lower this down to my size. What is fentanyl? Um, how many of you out there think that there is an actual pharmaceutical reason it exists? There is. It's been around for 60 years, believe it or not. And um, it was designed to help people in extreme pain. So it was first brought in to the scene 60 years ago for terminal cancer patients. And um, that is not what we're talking about, or surgeries or anesthesiologists use that to actually slow down the heart. So this is not pharmaceutical grade fentanyl is what we're talking about. That is highly regulated, usually, most likely, in a doctor setting or is uh, prescribed. What we're talking about is synthetic um, fentanyl. So what does fentanyl look like? Sacramento Crime Lab was very generous uh, to provide some of these photos. Some of the other photos are also from the DEA. And fentanyl can come in many different forms. There is no smell and there is no taste. The most dangerous, if you will, of any of the forms, which we're actually starting to see through all of the crime labs across the nation, let alone Sacramento County, is on the bottom right-hand side is the powder. And the reason why we see that to be the most dangerous is because once it becomes airborne, then it could potentially get into a mucous membrane, your eyes, your nose, or your mouth, and then someone intentionally or unintentionally could go under an overdose just like that. That is how potent it is. Um, we're seeing it top right, that's actually the DEA calls that the birthday cake. So think of fondant, it's very sticky, it has a sweet smell to it. They're putting this and attracting it in many different ways. Um, colorful pills, the M30 pills are the most popular. So they are adding now color and smell to it. Now I want you to get your critical thinking caps on and start thinking why. Why are we just moving from a powder substance into colorful candy-like type um, uh, pills? And then polka dot pills, chalk-like substance, and even gobstopper-like substance. 
And then what the video touched upon is the fact that we are now finding in through the crime labs that fentanyl is being found in all of the different drug categories. So for cocaine, methamphetamine, and heroin, they are cutting fentanyl in there because it, ultimately they don't have to use as much product if they're putting in fentanyl. It's cheaper, it's a higher high, and they don't have to use as much real organic product. So we are starting to see this in absolutely every category. Now to kind of hone it down to why the powdery substances might be so uh, dangerous is we all know what a, a sugar packet or a sweet and low packet is. That's equivalent to one gram. So when you start hearing news reports that there was 3,000 ounces that were seized here in Yuba County or there was 12 pounds of fentanyl powder seized here, understand that one gram, if that was containing fentanyl has the potential to kill 500 people. That is how powerful this substance is. So when um, we look at that scope of things and understand why exactly they are mixing it in all of the different substances, we kind of can understand a little bit better. Now the M30s, although those are the most popular that the DEA and all the crime labs locally are seeing, that is not the only fake counterfeit prescription medication that they're seeing. They're also seeing Adderalls, Percocet, Vicodin, um, all of them across Xanax bars, Antibars. So when we talk to kids and we'll put up cartoons or we'll put up some kind of a, you know, can you decipher between a real pill or a fake pill? Our scientists that come in when we have the youth events will bring a scientist in to speak to them. And they will say, we as scientists, as professionals who deal with substances all day long, cannot tell. That is how good these presses are becoming. They literally have to go and crush up the pill and test it to make sure the substance is in there. So we always let them know, even scientists these days cannot tell what is in a pill specifically. So um, I'm gonna, this is a quick video, but it kind of brings home my whole heart to get to the youth is truly, I do not believe they understand the danger that's surrounding them. <laughs> Mom, Mom, I didn't know, I didn't know one pill, one time could kill me. So I, I think it's important to address the fact of why don't we just stop here at town hall meetings and parent informational information meetings. And yes, it is extremely, extremely important, just like our chief investigator said, to go home and talk to our kids. Trust me, my kids have heard this speech so many times, but I will tell you as a parent to parent, it is so much wiser to, to have 61 minute conversations with our kid than one 60 minute conversation about one time and never address it again. It's like, don't get too close to the stove. How many times do we talk about it? Every time they're close to the stove, every time they go out with their friends, every time, oh, what are you thinking? And I think we could just stop at parent meetings and town hall meetings, but the heart behind the mission of Arrive Alive California is to get to the kids where they're at and in their language so that they understand. CDC has released uh, this statistic right here in front of you, fentanyl-related deaths or fentanyl death increases across the board. You see the, the age categories on the bottom. And every age category has an increase of about 772%. The reason why it's so important that we talk to the kids is because they are the most impacted. With nearly 4,633% difference, 
their age group is the one that is really being targeted through this crisis. So I wonder why. Why do you think that is? Well, first and foremost, what we're seeing today, because the drug landscape has changed so drastically, there's a new category of victim. What we're seeing is back in the day, you could go down this path of maybe unhealthy, risky choices, but along the way, you always had an opportunity to get help. You still today have an opportunity to get help for someone who has substance use disorder. This is a, a different, the one time I'm gonna try it, now because there's no tolerance involved, the potency of the fentanyl being in these counterfeit prescription pills is one pill can kill, one hit, one line, and it's wiping out an entire generation. May I introduce possibly two influencers? Two influencers as to why exactly this generation is being hit hard. Well, this is the generation that is the most connected. Again, I'm a mom, I get it. Cell phones, social media, computers, whatever. That is their social status. That is where they have seen um, help with their homework up the social ladder, all of the different things. How many in here have a child that has a cell phone or a computer or a gaming device? See, our kids are in on a highway. An information highway is literally on their pocket. The other influence very well could be the fact that they have grown up in a culture or society where there is a pill for everything. We've got WebMD. We have documentation that kids are now self-diagnosing themselves on TikTok. So they go and they say, I'm depressed. I have anxiety. And then they'll go and what's right there at their fingertips, the number one drug dealer or pusher, which we have found to be social media apps, things like Snapchat, TikTok, cash apps. So um, in their innocence, slightly their ignorance, they don't realize that you buy things off on a black market offline, if it doesn't come from your doctor, it's not legit. And that's what we preach over and over to them is if it doesn't come from your doctor, it's not legit. So the DEA released this, um, it's called the Emoji Drug Code. It's right there on their website. And we work with an organization out of San Diego, and they're actually federally funded to track illicit drug dealings online. And in two years, they tracked 80,000 drug deals online. Where are our kids? So again, going back to that statistic that CDC has and the, 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 the number of uh, growth for that age group, that is to be reckoned with. What we're also seeing is that drug dealers are no longer waiting in a dark alley. They're literally sending it right to your house. They even have Snapchats that show um, how they cover it up with candy or um, video games or whatever, and then all the pills are underneath. And the whole reason, I think the number one question we get from students or parents or the town halls that we have is, why would drug dealers want to kill off their customers? Well, that would be a terrible business plan. That's not the intent. The intent is their baseline business plan is to get somebody hooked for life. And the earlier they can do it, the better they can. They're not chemists. They don't know how to mix and they don't know what their supply holds. So there's so many different facets to this but they are going out very openly. Um, I have a dear friend of mine who lost their son. Zach Didier was at the Galleria Mall and this drug dealer actually geotagged out his menu to all the kids in the mall through Snapchat. These things happen anytime a hashtag, going to a party, gonna do this, that's where the swarm of opportunity lies. So you as parents, guardians, loved ones, I want to empower you, and the kids hate it when I say this, but please know your child's password to your phone because I am a big proponent of one, you are 
the one who's going to save them. But God forbid something happened to them. I think you would much rather them not just be coded as another overdose, right? But it could have been somebody that poisoned your child as a drug-induced homicide. When we start unpacking this and the, the ramifications of all of these different different things. There's so many great apps out there. Bark is one. We're not sponsored by them. I've used them um, with my younger kids, and um, it just lets you know, doesn't give you snapshots of their phone calls, but if anything's happening, they're always in the know of the lingo. These emojis constantly change. DEA constantly update, it, updates it, um, so it's a, it's a good site to jump on. Uh, so, a part of our programming when we go into the schools is we always bring in a resident. And I always play this as I'm talking and introducing our resident. And um, each one of these numbers represents a future, a life, a young person that died too soon. And when we bring in a family member um, that has lost someone, it really impacts them. And what I like to say is it connects the head knowledge. We give them facts, we show them pictures, but then it connects their heart to the fact that this could actually happen. And it happens to real people. Um, one of our Yuba Sutter residents, she is actually the PE coach at Yuba City High School. She has come out to many of our presentations. Unfortunately, she was not able to come tonight. Uh, but her story, I'll tell you, her and her brother graduated from um, Sutter High School, not too far away from here. So they're very, very involved in this community. And her brother started using drugs in high school. And he's off and on using drugs. And uh, one night he asked his, his same connection, hey, can I get a Percocet? And this was last year. Had a hard day, Give me, can you hook me up with the Percocet? And again, reflecting back on how much this drug landscape has changed. And the toxicology report basically came back that there were 1,600 milligrams of fentanyl in his system. Now, remember if you know one of the, the pictures that I had put up, two milligrams is a lethal dose. So in that one pill, there was enough fentanyl to kill 800 people. That is what's on our streets, and that's why it's so important to talk to our kids and to let them know. And a big part um, of when we present, we like to bring in like fire department or EMS and talk about uh, signs and symptoms of overdoses. And I have, uh, I work with a lot of different families that will come out and speak. Usually the auditorium is filled with pictures. Uh, the kids look like them, several, several young kids here in this, the region, and they get to see, and many of these kids, uh, we were talking, the investigator and I, simply just asked for, um, I have a migraine. I've heard all of the stories, and a friend gives them, here, this will work. I have cramps, here, this will work. Unbeknownst to them, it was a counterfeit prescription medication. So I do have a ring camera, and it kind of flips it back to what can we do? How can we protect ourselves? And one of the moms that I work with, uh, she said, please, please talk about the signs and symptoms of an opioid or a fentanyl overdose. So I will go into that in a second. But I want to share this with you um, so you can see the actual Maddox lives. There is no trigger warning needed, but this is an actual uh, case. Maddox actually does live, and I'll go into Narcan, signs and symptoms, and how important it is to get first responders rolling immediately.
So if you notice in the video, it said that Maddox needed four doses of fentanyl. Uh, another question we are often asked is, what determines how much Narcan is needed? Determines, really, uh, how much fentanyl is in someone's system, bottom line. But before we get to the Narcan, um, very important to understand signs and symptoms of an opioid or fentanyl overdose because it is not like Hollywood overdoses, the erratic behavior, foaming of the mouth. It's actually the complete opposite. It's a respiratory suppressant. So basically, not one time has anyone that has walked into this room told yourself, breathe in, breathe out, breathe in. It's a part of our natural body system workings, right? When fentanyl or an opioid attaches to the receptor in the brain, it blocks communication. So what happens as you go from breathing 12 reps to 10 to 8 to 6 to none? So it is actually, in fact, the complete opposite, no erotic behavior uh, for this type of a uh, overdose. And one of the mothers said, I wish, can you please incorporate this when you talk to your, the kids? Because um, my son, after they went out, had a good time, they came back all playing video games and they thought he just needed to sleep it off. And when in fact, uh, he was in the corner and having an overdose, he, he couldn't breathe and they did not realize. So these are some signs and symptoms. A lot of times our EMS or our fire department will go over and it talks about the physical sides, uh, trying to wake someone up, they're unconscious, the pinpoint pupil eyes, all of those things, purple skin uh, under the nails, things like that. Almost there's a, uh, a gurgling snore, a deep breathing gurgling snore that often uh, people will hear. It could be a mixture of those different symptoms. It could be one of those symptoms, uh, but those are typical for an opioid overdose or fentanyl overdose. Uh, so what is Narcan? Narcan, naloxin, it is FDA approved over the counter medication. You do not need a prescription to have this. Another mom said, it is like a fire hydrant. It is better to have one than not need one, than need one and not have one. I have brought several. I know our county has brought several, um, but they are, what happens is Narcan, and I'm going to be rest assured, you do not need any special training, I will give you your special training. There it is. It is a Nar Narcan used to need special training. And I say that because it was intravenously through a needle. They forgot somehow to adjust it with the lingo. Now it's a nasal spray. If anybody has allergies, you are well aware of what a nasal spray is. You put it up your nose and you plunge it. That is exactly the same formula that they put in or same format to administer Narcan in now. This can be found in gas stations, Walmart, pharmacies, and I know the ERs are still giving them away for um, free. So again, you peel. This is one dose. I don't have it with me. So each box has two doses. And it is simple as if you think by any chance that someone is having or experiencing an overdose, call 911. Get emergency services rolling because the brain can only have about four minutes with a lack of oxygen before it starts to die or it starts to go into some kind of a retreat. Same way with any of the major organs. So as soon as you can get first responders on, perfect. Um, if you have Narcan, administer it. Yes, ma'am. Okay, great question. The boxes have a three-year expiration. However, they did do a study, and they, they tested one 20, I think it was 19 years later, and it still had a 94% effectacy. So I wouldn't recommend carrying it in your glove compartment because of the heat. You want to keep it in a cool place or whatever. I carry them in my purse. I carry them wherever. My kids know, you know, hey, if, if we need it or what happens. A 10-month was playing at the park, and she put something in her mouth, and the kid went down. The babysitter had Narcan. I mean, because we're finding this everywhere, it's not the fact that you, it's a safeguard of, oh, now, now we can try all these substances. You know, it's like, well, 
I know that there is, there is a category that they carry Narcan for each other. That is not what we're talking about here. Um, a kid would not necessarily go out and say, I'm going to try a drug because there's a life save. You know what I mean? But um, yes, the life expectant or life, uh, shelf life rather, is, is very good for this. Um, so that is it. So press and the nas uh, administer the nasal spray. You've already got 911 called. Wait two minutes and then do another dose in the other nostril. And uh, we work with Chief Shalowitz's uh, fire department. And when he talked to the kids, why is it so important to get uh, first responders rolling is because there was one case here in Yuba City that they had to Narcan him 14 times on the way to the hospital. We don't know how much fentanyl is in someone's system. That is just to get them some help before EMS and first responders get there. So it's not the one and one all end all. Um, and then is Narcan safe? Yes, it is very safe. It does not hurt children or animals. And again, over the counter, you do not need a prescription. If you are not experiencing an overdose, it does not affect you. If you are, it could potentially save your life. Um, so, and it's not addictive. You cannot get high off of it. We've tried to combat all of the different myths that have been out there and that get brought up. So it is a very safe product. And I know a lot of schools are carrying it. I believe uh, we, when we try to encourage the administration, just like there's an emergency bag in every classroom, that this should be included in every classroom. Because if you just have it in the administration office or in the nurse's office, if it's across campus, that's a long trek to do. So, um, so it's our encouragement to everyone should have access to it. And then I think the most important thing is to make sure we understand that in California, there is a Good Samaritan law, that you cannot be civilly liable to help someone if they were to pass or die. You could not be liable for their death. And um, for many, many years, I was a crisis responder for law enforcement, 16 different agencies. And if it involved a youth at any cost, any, any kind of trauma, they would call me out. And I did that for about 10 years, and then my heart shifted after one of the calls that I went on, and it was a pill party, believe it or not, and all these kids sitting around, and they sat there, and it was one of the, those are all starting to come back. They're either called farm parties, skettle parties, but they dump whatever they have in the cabinet, in, a, in the jar, and then they go around, and they're playing drinking games and taking whatever pill and see what it does to them. Well, unfortunately, this one uh, child, youth, died and no one wanted to call the cops because they didn't want to get in trouble. And at that point, I'm like, I've got to get to these kids before these decisions are made, but to understand that they can't be held liable for someone's death if they're calling to help. So again, so, so very important um, to get this information out, talk to our kids, let them know all of these things, and it's not to scare them. Yes, this is going on. This is going on throughout the world. This isn't just Yuba County. This isn't just California or United States. This is happening everywhere. Um, so what can we do? We can empower ourselves with wisdom. We have the tools, and what our challenge is to the youth is to share the information that they've learned with others, because we can't talk to every person in the community. And that's our challenge for you, is for you to share your information that you've learned tonight. And our goal was that you would not just know of the word, but you would fully understand and grasp the urgency and what that looks like. Have we done that? Have we helped that? Yes. So I am going to, oh, I am within one minute away. I said, by 6.45, we're going to do question and answers. So. It is question and answers time. Does anybody have any questions? I'll, have, I'll invite the chief investigator up if you'd like to ask him questions as well. But anything, anything to come up that you need a clarification on, uh, we would be very happy to answer those. Yes, ma'am. Yes, very good. Narcan is for opioids. It's for the opioid overdose. And the question was, 
is Narcan just for fentanyl or is it for heroin and, and all of the opioids? That is correct. It is. And I will say, again, the drug landscape is changing. I don't know if and it's changing rapidly. It's so different than it was five years ago. And I will tell you, it's even different than it was a year ago. And the reason I bring that up, I don't know if anyone has heard of xylazine or Trank, zombie drug. There's a whole bunch of offshoots of names. Um, that is, does not work against Narcan. Narcan does not work against that because what that is, is a horse tranquilizer mixed with fentanyl. And because horse tranquilizer cannot be counterbalanced with Narcan, there is nothing that can work for that. And that's what we're starting to see. We're also seeing, starting to see analogs of fentanyl. Car fentanyl is another one that's coming in. And I know the crime lab, we've already had 11 cases of that. So it's not just a Philadelphia thing, it's here. Yes, ma'am. Great question. The question was, can someone Narcan themselves? The answer is no. You cannot Narcan yourself. Um, so unfortunately, how heartbreaking. I'm, I'm so sorry for your loss. But that, that is, you stop, you essentially just stop breathing. Um, it hits you so fast, depending on how much fentanyl is in your system, it could take minutes and it could take seconds. So again, um, no, you cannot Narcan yourself. Was that here locally? Sorry, sorry. Yeah, and that's where we're seeing, we work with a lot of district attorney's offices uh, here in the state, and they have completely shifted because of this whole other component of being deceived to death. People are not seeking out fentanyl, they want a Percocet. So Zach Didier, for example, example in Placer County, they had the Snapchat when he was at the Galleria Mall, and he's like, I just want a Percocet. Two Percocet pills, that's it. And he's like, totally, it's just Percocet, it's just Percocet. And when they got him up on the stand, he goes, no, we, I knew it was fentanyl and not Percocet. See, these, another misconception is these counterfeit prescription medications are being laced with fentanyl. There's no medication whatsoever in these pills. It's bunk, cornstarch, baby powder, filler, and fentanyl. So it's that whole deceiving factor. So when I sell parents, it's so much better just to have a peace of mind to have access to your phone because law enforcement, correct me if I'm wrong, cannot break into your phone unless you have a password. Even with a search warrant, it is nearly impossible. But if they didn't have that the dealer said, no, it's Percocet versus, hey, I need some fentanyl. You see what I'm saying? He got charged for murder versus, you know, just another overdose. The tux, yeah. Yeah. Thank you for sharing. Do you want to jump in there? Yes. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Go here. Okay. Last year, uh, we had our school districts approach the County Office of Education and ask for support 
for the fentanyl crisis. And so we reached out to our community leaders, our district attorney and law enforcement, all of our emergency responders to see how we could support them. And it was our Yuba County Health and Human Services who really came to our rescue and provided that support. They granted us $100,000 for our task force. So if you look around town, there are billboards up. We have been able to um, contract with Arrive Alive to do these presentations, and they are going into all Yuba County junior high and high schools to give this message to our students. And as well as that financial support, Health and Human Services provided Narcan kits so that we can have them on our school campuses, not just in the office, because that's not very helpful. We have them spread out throughout the campuses so that if there is a, a poisoning or an overdose, um, staff can go into action. But I just want you to be aware, we are doing all that we can to educate our students, but we need your help. We need the community's help also to get the word out. There's a generation we're not getting to, and those are our 20s and 30s and 40s and so on, but, um, but we're gonna do all that we can to get this into, um, our, into the classroom so that our kids can be empowered with this information. Thank you, Amy. I, I will tell you, I love this county. They, she's, she's putting it lightly of all the things that they have done for this community. They have gone above and beyond. It's not just, here, we're going to put some Narcan in one place in a campus. She's very, very serious. They went above and beyond the task force in and of itself, and then all of the different leaders in the communities pulling together. And it's not just a one and done and we're out. Uh, this is happening every single month, and it has been since uh, almost a year now. So, and we're not stopping. Obviously, you saw that the numbers continue to increase. Uh, so we've got some work to do. We're going to continue on, but we're going to get this under wraps for sure because we've got to start with the kids. And I'll tell you, if there's any generation that wants their voices heard, it's this one. We just got to give them the tools and no knowledge to get it out there. So uh, we definitely try to engage them at their level and, and challenge them to be that world changer that they really, truly, I believe, have the potential to do. And we can start with this. So... If there's any more questions, we're going to end a little early. No? Okay. Well, I appreciate so very much for you taking the time to honor your time. We're going to get you out of here about seven minutes early. Um, if you could, before you go, of course, we have a post survey, completely anonymous, and it helps us. Uh, we just started doing this for the parents, and we always do this for the kids, but it just, just helps us understand and measure the impact and the effectiveness of when we do our talks. So that would be grateful. Uh, I'd be very grateful for you to do that. And then, of course, you can follow us, and we're always keeping everyone in the know and um, posting pictures and things like that. So thank you again for your time. If you want to hang back, please feel free to grab as much Narcan as you would like. Pass them out at work if you'd like. We, we are a distributor <laughs> uh, now, so we've got several boxes. So feel free, and thank you for your time.